How's life treating you? What's going on in the world that's meaningful? You wanna know all the things that inspire me? That's cool, but first it's a Unified Diaries. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mike first with the Unified Diaries podcast. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. On this episode, we're going to be covering opportunity discrimination or career discrimination as we know it. As you know, every week I cover aspects of life, successes, things people are going through, uh, wins, failures, problems, and just to you know help you out to keep your mind positive and keep you going. That's just simply my goal. So thanks for listening in and I um, hope you enjoy. Thank you. Yo, man, I've got a new role. What? What you mean, Anjita? What's your new role? New role, Doofus, as in I'm changing teams. Hey, hey. <laughs> Since when? What? Didn't you see the emails about the senior role? Uh, no. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Is that why you've been acting weirdly lately? Like, incognito, like you've been distant, and you, you didn't even mention it. Not even mention you had any interviews. What? What do you mean? I've just been focused and keeping a low profile. You know, it's bad luck to bloat or say anything before you get new roles, right? Well, okay, I see. Okay, good for you. Well, when did that role come up and where did you see it? Two weeks ago. Check your inbox. Date, I think, was the 4th of this month. Lorenzo, is that you trying to deflect? Huh? No, wait, 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 let me check my inbox. Hold on, let me just have a quick look here. Uh, nothing here, nothing, no. Okay, I guess I wasn't included in the chain. Congrats, I guess. Is that what all the class were for? Come from that room? Yeah, you should have come. But I saw you were on the phone. That's why you didn't make it, right? Uh, well, not really. My boss knew I had a call scheduled for 2 p.m. And he told me it wasn't a big deal. Something about one of your clients coming in to meet you both. So I left it. What? Nobody. Stop playing around. I'm serious. That's what I was told. That's why I didn't even bother coming in. Even after I finished the call. What? So you're telling me you didn't know about this role and all the interviews taking place on the second floor? And you weren't there? Or told there was an announcement? in the newspapers as well, right? Uh, Not the work newspapers? Right. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Don't so are you so are you saying Mr. Rene kept this and lied to you? No, listen, I'm, I, I don't put words in my mouth. I'm not saying anything. I don't even know any of this was taking place. Well, something is definitely not right, though. I mean, either way, it's cool. It's fine. It doesn't matter anyway. What do you mean, man? You need to go and say something. That's not fair. Let's just stop it, okay? Listen, stop it already, right? Just, just leave but it. It's not, but, but, but it's not fair, you know? You should but say you something. Listen. It's clear to see that this was all a setup. Some of us, some people, continually get messed up. It's been five years, and I got more experience than most. Yet all the senior roles are hidden. They're always moving posts. Trying to tell me this is all just a coincidental mistake? Or you want me to complain, huh? And be seen as a moaning snake? You're trying to set me up, frustrate me till I choke. And they knew we're friends, that you come and provoke me without knowing. But but it's not your fault. I just won't bite. I'm cool. Well, firstly, my take on any type of discrimination is deliberate unfair treatment one goes through possibly based on their race their age their gender religion look and even skill set and talent they don't look right they don't fit in or they just aren't from the beholders world you know irrespective of this opportunity discrimination is pretty much the same thing especially with the career opportunities and the potential one can earn or rise up to Obviously, it's not the same as racial discrimination, you know, gender discrimination, religious discrimi- discrimination to that extent, but it carries a degree of pain as well. Well, the reason why this happens is because it's a hidden, unwritten rule that these heights of, you know, careers, this shouldn't be reached for some people. It just shouldn't happen because when or if it does happen, 
the offender, the person who's in charge, is of a different belief, you know, a different ethnicity, maybe different gender or different background from that person who should be getting the promotion or pay rise. And they themselves will feel uneasy because they just can't wrap their head around how the person will turn out to be if this were to happen, if they were to get that opportunity. Will they be better than them? Will they be in a position of power which can put they themselves at risk? Do they really deserve the promotion or more money which puts them on a salary pedestal which could in turn rival their own in the coming future? Putting them in the same hierarchical level is in the same space and how will others react to this? Will those who feel entitled for the sake of feeling entitled strike back or leave? Then what? No, then what exactly would happen? And it's, it stems from a subconscious of fear and an undeniable envy. People are scared their position will be taken. They'll be perhaps left behind or they'll be shown up. And because they don't trust you or aren't from the same world as them possibly, how can they possibly imagine if you'd expose them when they mess up or something. Because if you're not from the same world, that could happen, right? Do you have the same loyalties? Because believe you me, the people in the highest positions aren't as talented or as skillful as they portray. So they're bound to make mistakes concurrently. And don't be surprised when I tell you this. Some are put in those positions just through who they know and who they're close to. But this doesn't take away the fact that lots of people generally are good at their jobs are good at what they do and have gone to the top for the right reasons the right way and some purposely block you for their own reasons you know and it affects people it's soul crushing it hurts real bad when you've been in the position for so long and you clearly have all the necessary experience for new roles and continuously overachieve on your performance your targets and champion all the right behaviors it, it feels as if no matter how much you try or whatever you do you'll never be seen as equal or even noticed. The opportunities aren't presented to you, and even if they are, you just won't be considered. It's that simple. Blind eye. Hey, listen, Lordy. If you ever got a problem, find a way to solve them. What's the benefit of staying quiet? Go confront them all. If I were you, I'd find a way to escalate this matter. I bet right now they're talking about it with so much laughter. Nothing ever good comes from humility. You feeling me? I'm never afraid. It's always about keeping it real to me. I can't even understand how you out here keeping your cool. Go make some noise and make a point. Take them to school. I've seen unfair things happen, but this crosses the line. You shouldn't ever have to swallow this. It's simply not fine. I've seen you do your job gracefully and you always on time. I've also seen you do jobs for others. And there was this one time that you took the blame for something that wasn't your fault. And you were told off and you took it like a pinch of salt. You've inspired so many others and yet you never get called. And I don't like seeing you like this. It feels like an assault. You listening, you're listening to me? You know, it's damaging. It's a real big deal. You know, a part of you will change forever. Damage people change. There are things in life that don't make any sense. And unfair opportunity is one of those things. Opportunity discrimination kills your confidence. Your performance is affected. And your will to thrive and succeed like you were doing before erodes. Before you know it, you explode intrinsically. You become one of these two types of people. The person who is forever looking for a way out and desperately looking for any window of opportunity in the job market or two the quiet person in the corner who watches and waits for a new employer a new boss to come and save them this is because you no longer truly believe in a fair equal system and you start questioning life your own abilities and start wondering is it maybe you are you just not good enough are you worthless and is the newbie with no experience who is younger and fresher than you perhaps better than you but how so they're just a pinch of salt. They are the milk on a baby's chin. And you are the old fine wine that tastes sweeter than cherry. How can they not possibly see that? So you become stressed, confused, and distraught. And unfortunately, if you're not careful, you'll easily hand all your other 
whatever possible opportunities to the next person because your mojo is gone, no longer there. Remember, the way you're perceived is as important as the way you perform in your role. And even though this isn't easy and not always seen, you cannot sleep on it and let it slip, you know? So some of the solutions there are to this and what you can do in the future, you know, I believe there's four real possibilities. The first one, you can complain, make noise. You know, you can pick up your fact sheets and performance evidence and go and rattle on about how you should have got the role and how it's unfair that they haven't considered you or even mentioned this to you at all and technically hidden it from you, which isn't right, right? But the problem here is it's your word against theirs and you'll never win if no one backs you up. And complaining makes it worse because you'll be seen as the loud, sulking loser. Second option, look for a new opportunity within. You know, you cannot even speak to people you know from other teams or apply the opportunities that come up or the ones that actually land in your inbox. Either way, it's a mess because you forgot that managers, bosses, senior members of staff are like brothers and they're like sisters to each other. They talk and gossip about everything to each other. Be sure, be assured that they will discuss you and it will come down to pettiness, whether you get considered or not. That's just the way it is. And the third option, look for an opportunity elsewhere. You know, it's, just, it's, it's like seen as, this isn't seen as a sidestep to a new company. It's the reason being it's the same exact role. So people see it as you're just taking a step to the left. There's no real progression here. Yes, you could be getting more money, but just stop doing the same role again. Probably for another one to two years realistically, which is a slowdown. And don't forget, you have to go through the same small talk again to become liked in your new role, your new company, your new culture, and fit in, etc. Which isn't always easy. It also takes time. Last but not least, present a reasonable clause to the beholder at first. So, you know, tell the opportunity giver. It's important, you know, you note, I mentioned firstly, or at first, let me reiterate, present a reasonable clause to the opportunity giver first. Say to them, I want this role. I, I, can, I can do it. You know, because on this step, as opposed to the other three solutions I discussed, this step has, has, has um, alternatives, which is what you want, right? So many people I know, you know, they assume they aren't given roles due to their own beliefs, self-harming thoughts, sometimes prejudice, unfair treatment, and favoritism. Now, whether this may always be true or not, how do you actually know? Just because you weren't included in a career, employment salary, or even a, a life opportunity or a new job, this doesn't always mean that there's a reason like this behind it. Sometimes you might feel it because you have been through it before, but it's not always the case, especially when you don't know for a fact it's happening in your face. You know, maybe they felt the role just wasn't right for you. Maybe your previous performance or actions or attitudes towards certain tasks you had to do led them to believe this. Maybe they're even doing you a favor by not even considering you for this role because you're not good with stress. Longer working hours may be involved. Major responsibilities that could impact your daily routine. How about your organization skills? Or that you just need more time and training? So five years may seem long, but it takes five minutes to figure out whether your characteristics are built for certain roles. So you could be in the company forever and you cannot learn certain skill sets. It can take you up to 15 years and that's just the way it goes. You either have it or you don't. You see, money isn't always the answer and you need to remember that. But what you definitely must do if you feel the role is right for you or should have or could have been yours is to pick yourself up present a case with evidence to prove your worth and why you should have been considered, but how you plan to be considered for the next opportunity. And not just any ordinary opportunity that comes your way, the actual opportunity which suits you that you see yourself doing. Nevertheless, if you do figure out there is deliberate prejudice or any sort of discrimination, prejudice, then you must take it up to the union. But before you get there, let me give you a real life example. So it's nothing to do with the work, employment, but it's something I remember vividly in school. And it touches upon grasping opportunities, making yourself stand out and defying all biased odds, 
which unfortunately is the world we live in. So it's quite unfortunate, right? So I knew a girl who was, you know, one of the prettiest girls in school at the time. And she was years and years above me. And she was much older. But I remember this vividly because she was always in the football field on match days watching others play. And this girl had a friend who she was really close to. I mean, they were like so close. One would think they were sisters. The way they were always together. The friends wasn't as pretty as her, right? And she wasn't as well groomed as she was, her, her main friend. But their, their beauties were really miles apart. Really, You could tell the difference. So no one ever really noticed this friend of hers. Everyone saw her friend as the plus one friend she carried around with her. I know it's painful to hear that, but that was the truth. That's how it was. It's funny. Guys, we usually always look at the prettiest, most stylish, wowing girls. And that's just the way it was and still is today. So the pretty girl, like the football captain, the good looking, tall, strong, dark hair, chiseled guy who was well spoken, just friendly and nice to talk to. They would chat all the time, whereas the less pretty girl would always remain quiet and in her shell, sort of passing by time. Whenever the good looking guy and his friends would come around them both, no one would ever really speak to the less pretty girl. But the following summer, check this out, something surprising happened. The less pretty girl came back to the school well-groomed, with a bit more confidence, with this outspoken personality, charisma, and character, which she got. Everyone was flabbergasted. Her style, her manners, just the way she carried herself was infectious. Now, guess who the good-looking captain guy, which all the girls wanted, fell for? Yep, the not-so-pretty girl. She always had a crush on him, but decided to come out of her shell and the moment she realized the guy was becoming fond of her personality, she took opportunity and went out and got what she wanted. That's the same way you have to treat the opportunities that come to you in life. Work, everything. Yes, I know, it's not that simple. And prejudice can always be a factor, but how the hell on earth will you possibly know if you don't try and put yourself forward or challenge the status quo by being the best version of yourself? Or getting that no for an answer first. Or understanding what it is really that you can't get those roles. If you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't chase, you lose pace. Staying quiet and waiting for hand handouts and sulking is not an art you want to follow. So follow your heart. Follow your dreams. And don't be scared to make things happen. That's the only way you can beat opportunity limitations. So I guess the three points I'd like to leave you with to take away with you are the following. Yes, there probably is prejudice or an underlying reason you aren't getting your opportunities in life, jobs, promotions, salary, pay rises, but rise above all the bull, you know the rest. And secondly, show yourself. Why do you need to be in line above everyone else for a raise? What's so special about you? Third, when the chips are down, lift your head up. You probably heard that saying a million times when one door closes and many others open. You just have to find it. But it's not just about finding it. It's about finding it in you and making it happen, which is tough. But so are you. So thanks for listening, guys. And as tomorrow is never promised, I want to leave you with some of my song recommendations and quotes you can live by this week. So I love music, as you know. I'm not going to hide it. It moves me. It inspires me. And I've always created my own so I can respect other people's arts as well. So I like unknown artists want to come up to the unknown to the known artists i grew up listening to all kinds of music you know primarily hip-hop but i love rock music techno music and even alternative pop rock you know afro beats high life kizomba you know edm I, I just like music and that's just the way i am my taste in music is really colorful because i was exposed to a lot of moving sounds growing up from my parents to family and friends but i guess i just liked art so I've recently fell in love with this artist. I didn't know who she was until recently. You know, I heard her song, Energy. It was called, yeah, it's called Energy. And she's called Sampa the Great. Check that song out and check her music out. Totally hit me. So check her out and uh, I think you'll also enjoy it. So the quotes I live by this week. Those who choose to hide decide to live broken. The battle just begun. 
you could always have won yesterday. The road ahead is steady and there are no bumps if you're ready. So once again, thanks for listening in. And if you want to check out some of the more stuff, uh, every week Thursday, I have a new episode here for you guys. And if you want to check out some of the music, head over to the uh, Tukova Entertainment's page on SoundCloud, which is T-U-K-O-V-A, Tukova Entertainment's. And check out our um, Instagram page as well, Mike Versal. And um, I'd like to let you know that I appreciate everything you guys are doing for me by giving me a chance and you know, hearing me out. Hopefully I can inspire you, you know, for better days ahead. So if you liked, grab a mic and let everyone know it's Mike Versal at the Unified Diaries. Peace.